Greetings, programs. I wanted to take a second to tell you how I created this season of Recruiter Friend using Riverside FM. Riverside is an online platform that records audio and video footage locally and uploads it to the cloud. It's been super easy for me to use. I set up a studio on the website, I send a link to my guests, and that's it. In over a decade of podcasting, finding out post-recording that the audio or video quality was bad was my biggest complaint. Not having to worry about it this season has been a huge relief. Using the affiliate link in the description below, you can check out all the other features Riverside has to offer, like their shiny new editor. Now, on with the show. Greetings, programs, and welcome to another episode of Recruiter Friend, the show where we get to learn about the people behind the keyboard. This week, we're sitting down with a gamer, content creator, business manager, entrepreneur, and an amazing individual. Let's give a big Recruiter Friend welcome to Lulaboo. Thanks for being here. Hello, thank you for that intro. That was like a long list of, um, I'm not gonna lie, that is actually kind of stuff that's in there. I just didn't realize putting it out on a list like that is like, wow, thank you, is all I gotta say. No, thank you. Uh, Your tweets, like, you have like this thread of tweets when it's like, hey, if you're a content creator, here's some best practices that have worked and are proven to work. Please read them so that I'm trying to help you for free, basically. (laughs) Uh, um, I do the best I can. Yeah. I've been around for a, a, quite a long time in the content creation space with uh, with my fiance. So it's for us, we've kind of we've seen her thing or two out yeah. there in the world, and it's definitely um, you know try to we try to impart some wisdom sometimes out there in the world for it. Yeah, yeah, and that's that that list is not exhaustive. There are things that you do that didn't make like there's you you do, you do so much you we would be here all day listing them all. <laughs> Oh, that's okay. We don't. We don't have to go through all of it. You just whatever, whatever interests you. We can totally talk about. It. That's absolutely uh, whatever you want to do. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. Let's let's start with Warcraft. Um, what was your first exposure to the Warcraft universe? Uh, I had just <laughs> finished City of Heroes, where I was playing with a bunch of friends, and Love City uh, then they all just kind of bro- you know our our superhero team broke apart. So uh, I was very sad, and uh, at the time, my sister. Uh, was like at you know like elbow deep into Final Fantasy, but her and I both mm-hmm. uh, started to uh, her and I both started to get interested in World of Warcraft. So we both uh, almost at the same time around Vanilla WoW. I'm not saying that I was ever in beta, but I was definitely in Vanilla WoW. Yeah. I was there when you know Molten Core was the uh, was the top tier stuff that you could do. Yeah. Um, the hot place to be. Yeah, uh-huh. literal hot place to be. Absolutely. <laughs> um, I remember. Yeah, so I was you know, I was Vanilla WoW. I joined a guild called Order of Crimson Might. Uh, I had played, you know, I was a main assist back in the day when a main assist was necessary as a rogue. Uh, you know, when we didn't have uh, when we didn't have you know targets. Yeah, with pretty you know colors and symbols that we can be like, okay, go for X next. Okay, go for you know. No, it was like mm-hmm. target of target or main assist. That's what we're going for next, especially you know that. for stuff that's like a blast from the past. Main assist. I haven't heard that in forever. <laughs> it was a long time ago. Um, that yeah, my first character in, in World of Warcraft was a was a rogue. Nice. And then uh, when when the expansion came out, I realized well, I can't throw a stick without hitting a DPS somewhere, and I would like to get into like raid slash dungeon. So like, let me just roll a healer. Mm. And then I rolled a healer for 10 years and then I went tank uh, like two X packs ago and I haven't really looked back. I, I love tanking. It's great. It's like my favorite nice. thing to do right now. It's like a household of tanks you have there because I know your partner is also a tank. You know, it's, it's uh, weird. We've been together 10 years and I've only barely asked him about tanking advice like six months ago. So Really? It was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, uh, I just never actually broached the subject. And boy, when I did, he was like, well, let me tell you something. <laughs> and uh, yeah, absolutely. Just we, we were walking our dog and he's just sitting there just, you got to do this. You got to do this. You got to do. Um, all right. Okay, buddy. All right. All right. I got I it. I love it. In his glory. <laughs> yeah, really, really. So he That's was great. all about it, super excited, like that my fiance was just totally like, okay, you're going to tank. Okay, well, go. here it is. This is what you need to do. And this is what you got to spec. This is the website you got to go to. This is, the... And I was like, all right, all right, okay. All right, let me just digest <laughs> this really quick and I'll get back to you. Yeah, I've made a huge mistake. Well, yeah, exactly. That's exactly <laughs> what happened. I got like this info dump where I couldn't take notes because I was like holding a dog leash and I was trying to like pick up dog poop and whatever. So uh, <laughs> yeah, it was a, uh, yeah, that was a weird time. I love it. So you you played right through since vanilla. That's wild. Was there ever mm-hmm. a time when you were like, I need to I need to take a break from this? Um, I took a break, and I'm really sad that I didn't take a break during Kata, but I took a break during MOP. 
Mm. Uh, oh, that so was the good one. That's what everybody said. Everybody, <laughs> like, I uh, went to culinary school full time. I was working full time and I was going to culinary school full time. Uh, so I didn't have the uh, the extra the hours in the day to be able to play World of Warcraft. So I was like playing vicariously through my uh, through my boyfriend at the time. If you got Tally, if you guys don't know, this is the guy who's like streaming World of Warcraft since like literally 2010. So um, it, early in his streaming career, this man would be like streaming 18 hours a day, like literal 18 hour, just long haul shifts. We had a 24 hour Jack in the box right next door. So he would literally just finish uh, at like 3 a.m., get dinner and then just like go sleep three, four hours and then get up and do it again. He was like crazy at the time. Uh, he's definitely wow. let up since then. But um, he was kind of you know, running World of Warcraft uh, Twitch at the time in the early days. And I would just, I would sit there and watch it while I was doing my homework for culinary school while I was <laughs> practicing dishes. I would make him food. He was like, hey, honey, it's like, uh, you know, this was the week we have to practice like berry tarts. Do you want a berry tart? Yeah, okay. So uh, <laughs> I, you know, he wasn't making a lot of money streaming yet. So I'm sitting here being the breadwinner and I'm sitting here being the, uh, um, you know, trying to, go to culinary school because I wanted to learn how to cook and then hopefully just get into the restaurant business one of these times. So it was uh, during that time, it was during MOP and I was just super sad because later I found out that Throne of Thunder was like the best braid experience in the world. And I'm just sitting here being super sad yeah. that I never got to experience it like in the beginning. Uh, but, you, you know, maybe we might see were. it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe we might see Throne of Thunder again. Who knows? And, you know, we'll, right. it'll get taken down in like 45 minutes as usual, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. We'll allow it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, did you guys meet in-game? Uh, yeah, actually. No uh, way. Yeah, so my sister introduced us. Um, even though my sister and I both got into WoW at the same time, she like was playing a horde, uh, playing mm -hmm. a horde character with horde uh, guild. I was playing an alliance character with alliance guild. And um, then my... And I was playing with my buddies. I had gotten out of OOC uh, at the time, so Word of Prince of Mind, they like broke up, and I was like, "I'm not, I'm not gonna follow you to the new server. Like, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go run with my buddies, or just a bunch of degenerates, not that great in WoW, or we're, we just like to hang out. We were just always like messing around while we were like playing, right? So, um, and they had taken a break, and I was so I was kind of homeless on WoW, so, um, so I was, so my sister's like, "Hey, just come over to Horde side, you know." We're raiding. It'll be fun. This was like uh, Wrath of the Lich King. You know, the, the boss that she needed 25 tries. You only had 25 tries per week to do oh, at the yeah. time. That that was around the tier that I had uh, met Towley. He was the main tank for the guild that my sister had gotten me into. I was the healer. Um, I was one of their backup healers. Uh, looking back, I wasn't really that good, but they, they brought me in as a backup and I would have to be healing him. It was him or some other warrior tank that uh, it was, that it was one of those two. But um, uh. If, for some reason, my sister gave him my number. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Yeah. Just strangers on the internet. Um, it's a different time back then. It, was it really was. It was the wild west of like, you know, online ga video game dating. You know, we weren't really too cognizant of like, you know, just yes. same thing as Craigslist. We weren't too cognizant of serial killers out there, you know, right. Uh, right. on <laughs> Craigslist or on WoW or any or stalker situations or anything like that. So uh, I was basically like who is this new jersey area code number trying to text me and i'm in california so i'm like who who right. do i know in new jersey and it was just, yeah my sister's like yeah i gave uh i gave her tally your number like our tank the tank tally he's like yeah i was like oh okay fuck it oh, you know, he funny. seemed like a cool guy every time i had to talk to him so then like we would talk to yep. each other and we literally did not stop talking to each other ever since it was like 2009 it was the day before thanksgiving and he had texted me for the first time. And then we just didn't stop talking to each other afterwards. No like, you know, it was one of those times back when we had Ventrilo. We would just always yep. be in Ventrilo. All you know, when you like, if you <laughs> know, you know, you, there's two people of the, of, uh, generally of the opposite sex that were like hanging out in Ventrilo all the time. <laughs> everybody else in the fucking guild knew what was happening. Like, yeah. everybody knew. And everybody would like always pop in in the guild. Like, hey guys, what are you doing? Like... <laughs> And we would just sit there and he was way, I was way over geared. The, the, the guild got me over geared for like heroics. He was way over geared. He was one of the best geared tanks on the freaking uh, <laughs> server. Uh, and we were both way over geared for heroics, but we just wanted to talk to each other and we wanted to have our hands busy while we were talking to each other. So we would just, right. 
we would just run heroics. You know, I would heal him, he would tank, and he would like, and I say the word tank loosely, he would just grab everything and run it to the end of the instance because, <laughs> and while we were talking to each other on like comms and like, you know, just poor DPS trying to catch up, you know, while he's sitting there, you know, getting everything to the end, to the finish line. I've watched um, his stream. That's still how he tanks. <laughs> yeah, no, it really is. Right. Yeah. So nothing's really changed since then. That is still a thing. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, no, uh, you know, what is it? Uh, what is it? Six months later, we moved in together. Stupid decisions all around six at the beginning. Months. Yeah, six months, right? That's I met wild. you online six months ago. Like, I met you in Thanksgiving, and we moved in together by June the next wow. year. That well, was a when terrible you know, you know. idea. <laughs> I know, right? That's crazy. So he was, like, doing YouTube videos, and he was streaming stuff in between trying to, like, find job applications. And... Right. And then... Did you ever think that you would be where you're at now then, like... When he moved in, were you like, this is going to last maybe a year? This is, or were you right Hello. away? Were you like, you like, know what, I we're in really, this for the long haul. I had really no foresight. And for me, I'm a kind of like a foresight, very much a, a head planner person. But for okay. some reason, I did not have a huge foresight uh, about where this was going to go with him. Because um, I he was already like streaming on a website called Xfire. And he was, when I met him, you know, Heroes was big at the time. Because I remember one of his titles was like, save the towel, save the world. And um, what a great show! That's a I know. sweet callback. I love that. <laughs> so he would. Uh, so I. That's how I kind of remember periods of time. Uh, is because okay, Heroes was big at the time. Um, right. And if you think the writer strike isn't important, then you need to watch Heroes until the writer strike happened, and then you need to realize that yeah. it's really important to make sure that we, you know, we don't have the writers on strike, and we give them whatever it is that they need because the the downfall of the Heroes franchise was just Man. oh so right sad. The that show yeah. fell right off a cliff. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. Uh, I love that. Yeah, so yeah, he his YouTube videos got popular. He started streaming live streaming and that got popular. It, we had the conversation about him like, "I want to do this full time." Yeah. And I just said, "Yes, okay. Sure. You know what? Yeah, let's do this." And um that was that was it. Like we went full speed ahead as a team uh like since the beginning. I love it. That's great. That's great. So you you went you started off culinary school. Um when you graduated, did you did you like were you working in a restaurant? Because you don't do that now. <laughs> no, uh, I was in a restaurant for about six months, and then I okay. realized my ten years working at Costco um, gave me like really severe tendonitis. Oh, so no. I just couldn't hang in the restaurant business. I couldn't like I had to like uh, hand roll a thousand dinner rolls, and I couldn't do it. My hands would just cramp up. Uh, they would just lock up. I would just be in a lot of pain within like fifteen minutes. Meanwhile, these like dudes are all around me just. Given, you know, because the restaurant business, it's it's really unforgiving. It's a very, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, sexist, unforgiving business. So if you can't hang, they will give you shit till you quit. Right. Um, and basically, that is what ended up happening. I couldn't, like, my hands failed me, and I realized I wasted, like, $50,000 in student loans to, like... But I know how to Sucks. cook now, and I make really great food when I'm at home. So <laughs> I ended up, you know, streaming that cooking uh skills for the internet on twitch so it wasn't a full okay. it wasn't a total loss like i i still took what i learned and i you know <laughs> did everything i could with it you uh i mean you you basically dominate every industry you enter into have you ever considered just opening your own restaurant i'm consider. i was considering it uh for yeah. a while like i wanted to uh I wanted to open up a food truck because that way it gave me leeway Ooh. to like just go wherever I wanted. I'm like, okay, let me mm -hmm. go drive to this state and you know, let me just open up because mm -hmm. make all the Mexican food I can make, you know, from the back of my head. Like I have recipes that I don't even need to look at cookbooks anymore that I can just make off the top of my head. And um, one of these days when I no longer, <laughs> uh, when I'm like semi-retired, I'll probably like roll up a food truck and just hang out at beaches and, you know, and just... Yep. Beaches, parks, anywhere pretty, you know, and just kind of make food and look at stuff, you know, enjoy the wildlife out there. Maybe that's 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 still the goal. That's still the something that I want to do. Yeah, just chill, just chill on the beach. That's where that's where it's at. Yeah, pretty much. Um, I love it. So you okay? So you started those streaming, uh, cooking streams. At uh -huh. what point did you go? You know what? Okay, I I'm just gonna do this gaming full time as well. Uh. Well, I was still working at Costco up until 2014. Uh, mm -hmm. Tally okay. had gotten it had gotten income regularly enough to where he started questioning me about why are you still working? Oh, nice at Costco. Like he was, 
And it was really funny because we went to go house hunting. Uh, we were looking for a house to rent because we didn't want to be in apartments anymore. We kept getting noise complaints mm-hmm. from be- like, a, you guys are like yelling at three in the morning. That's Tally doing his streaming stuff. And we didn't want right. to share walls with people anymore. And the housing situation where we were at in San Diego sucked. So we were looking elsewhere. So we were uh, we were looking like up north, just basically places out of the way that were cheaper. And so uh, we ended up being next to, uh, we ended up getting messaged by Bajira uh and Jen, Warcraft Jen, I don't know if you know the, yeah. the author, you know, Warcraft Jen, she's out there just doing, uh, you know, have, being an absolute unit, just killing it right now. But yep. anyway, uh, they had messaged us and be like, hey, if you ever want to take a look at the area we've got, you know, it's it's pretty nice. So uh, we went up there and uh, I was kind of passively talking like, yeah, I might, you know, if we move up here, I might have to quit. And one of the supporters on Tally 100% was Bashir. Like, yes, you should quit. Nice. Um, yeah, you guys are doing great. You should like you, you you know you guys got this. Blah blah blah. So he was like one of those people who helped kind of uh, support the uh, decision for us to just be like, yeah, we don't have to. You don't need the nine to. It was it wasn't a nine to five for me. It was like twelve to nine for me for right. Costco because uh, it was craziness. I couldn't even. I tried to stay at Costco. I tried. I was trying to transfer <laughs> to every Costco because I we had I had worked at the second closest Costco next to the Mexico border, okay. and I had. And imagine me trying to transfer to every single Costco for the next 100 miles north, and none of them took me. And, really? Uh, that I took that as a sign. I was like, okay, I'll quit. It's yeah. fine. Uh, so it was, then it, we didn't look back. It was like the week, I quit the week before BlizzCon that year and went to BlizzCon, not having to, not needing to go back to work afterwards. It was a great feeling. I bet. I bet it was. Did you... Was it like an active decision for you to, because you, you sort of feel like the business management role, right? For for the team, for you and Tally? Yeah, at the beginning of um, when, before Tally ended up getting a team, uh, I definitely was helping him out in everything that he needed. So everything, you know, technology-wise, like I had to help him build the computer. We did that together. Um, back when he was rolling an e-machine and he decided he wanted to get serious on streaming, I uh, one of the things that I started helping with was like, all right, well, let's get you a better PC then. Let's... Okay. With fries, we like drove over to the local like machine, you know, computer parts store when it was still around. You know, rip, rip fries; it's not here anywhere anymore. Uh, so we, you know, we bought all the parts we needed. He freaking uh, live streamed the computer. Like he just he used to just live stream his whole our whole entire lives at the beginning, right? So he would have his <laughs> phone, and he's like, "Chad, are we doing this right? Is this here? Are we supposed to like put the RAM and sticks like right here?" And it was crazy. It was. Um, I love it. It was some, some crazy stuff. So uh, I would help him do that. I prepared taxes. I did like stuff that he just would not, does not want to deal with. And I don't blame him. Okay. Um, I bas- basically picked up the slack on that. So that was like administrative stuff. Um, he generally would do most of his emails sometimes. And he would just sit there. We would talk about it and, and, and strategize for stuff like that. So. Uh, he would, we would plan our, you know, just planning our year, planning our month. Like, okay, this is coming up. We know this is coming up now. We don't know when this will be here, but when it does, here's our game plan when it happens. Just stuff like that. So we, um, we worked as a team. I would, you know, if we ever, when we used to go to conventions, I used to always like, I had to make him go to our first convention so that, um, so that he knew just you know, how important the networking was. So I just made it uh-huh. like, maybe I want, I know what I want for my birthday. Let's go to bed. And uh, oh. and that's how I managed to get him to PAX, and it was great. The first time we went, ever went to a convention like that for him, he got recognized by the PlayStation uh, manager guy passing out like swag to people in line. He's like, I know you. No and then way. Told, and they just walked us up to the front of the line while we got like death stares from everybody else um, as we were walking to the front. So it was like, that was a, that was a time. Very There's things cool. that I do remember like from, from way back in the day uh, that are like really cool moments in life yeah. and and those are one of those things that we knew that i knew that we were going in the right direction where like this mm-hmm. guy who works at playstation knows who rob is mm-hmm. and that is nuts and uh <laughs> it was great so i i, I would and i would just be collecting business cards like hey here's you know here's our information uh you know collecting i would collect business cards i was learning everything i could about what these guys already knew who've already done the convention circuit a zillion times right. but this is the first time that they had twitch emerge and come out and like Oh, what's Twitch? I'm like, oh, I can tell you. Like, you know, so that was our first time trying to get into introduction into like introducing even the people in video game side about what's going on with Twitch. So 
Ooh, that That's was a different crazy. time. Did you did like so you worked at Costco, but did you have any formal training in that? Because I have to say you're like the queen of networking. Um and <laughs> thank you. Like, was that all self taught? Like uh, I de- I definitely like I didn't get any formal training for networking. I don't think there is a such thing. I th- I think as, uh, I mean there are not. seminars you can go to. There are literal uh there are literal like events and seminars just specifically for networking. And I actually ended up help make a nonprofit uh recently for that. No way. Um, but it's one of those things to where uh the video game industry in the in the very early time was just mostly about hey let's i know you let's get a drink okay and then oh by the way here's my contact information afterward after like you know five shots in and you know we're you know things are happening everywhere uh it was just a, it, at the beginning it was just about making friends with everyone I'm like oh i know who you are i'm like oh who am i or who are you who am i right. to you um and uh it was just more of and, and you know getting to know people in every space that wanted to know us and then after a while it was uh realizing that uh using social media was also super helpful because we could follow people on there and we can try and meet them in real life uh i met my financial advisor like we had (laughs) talked and back and forth over the internet and when i realized we were both in the same uh whiskey bar together i was screamed out (laughs) loud oh my god he's here and uh, and my and, and my boyfriend was like, "What are you doing? What are you talking about?" I was like, I wanted some. I wanted you to meet this person for the longest time. Uh, that's funny. <laughs> and uh, legit, like five steps away, uh, they were there. We got to talk, and that's how you know I started with like we started building a team around us of like right. people that would help carry us and, and and make sure we were okay and and stuff like that. So yeah, and it's about just networking, you know, uh, being able to be out there, introduce yourself, um, kind of. Be prepared. Have a game plan when you're out there trying to. It, it's different now. Yeah, uh, drinking is definitely not uh, something that is not the go-to. Yeah, I wouldn't <laughs> do it. I mean, you should if you if you if you are able to and you want to. Sure, go out there and, and then do the drinking stuff. But like, man, because we used to get messy. It was crazy. Um, and uh, something very valuable information: if you don't drink or smoke. Don't drink or smoke. Just sit mm-hmm. there. Um, I used to tip a bartender every time he gave me a Diet Coke that made it look like a rum and Coke. Uh, oh, smart. Because there's just something about the old guard of video gaming, of the video game <laughs> people who would feel more comfortable with you with a drink up on your hand for some reason. And I understood that. Uh, we also found our best networking in the smoking section. So people who were outside Found-y smoking... We would just accidentally like pass by the smoking section and it was just people we knew there. And, you know, at the time, ta- uh, at the time, Tyler started getting into vaping. Before that, he was actually a cigarette smoker. So we actually found a lot of good networking in the smoking section. Even if you don't smoke, you, I really do recommend just kind of going out there and figure out, figuring out where everybody is kind of doing that. Mm-hmm. Because it's just, it's the really passive places. You're not, you're not supposed to actively network, but you're just supposed to like, hey, you know, I know you, you're doing, I think you're doing great blah 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 you don't have to sit there and just you know like this is my channel you should like totally right. hire me like it was one of those things to where we were just wanted to be friends with everybody like tally especially is an extremely sociable guy like i learned most of my socializing from him because i was an extremely an introvert but um being around him you know a dude from new jersey who's attended so many you know social events before <laughs> like in his life that he just knows how to he just knows how to like schmooze and I just kind of learned from him too. And we just kind of started doing it together. It was it's just kind of how it rolled. And now we're just really good at it. We just show up and <laughs> we just start wanting to be friends with everybody. Very cool. You guys are like on the cutting edge of like Twitch becoming a thing. It seems like you're almost like building the plane as it's flying. That's uh, that's wild. Oh, on Twitch. Absolutely. Yeah. Damn. Trying to convince people like, who are you? Why do you want a game code from us? What's right. Twitch? Like that was a completely... A uh, different problem than the problem nowadays, where it's like I have thirty five hundred applicants for this one code that we're giving away. Why should yeah. we give it to you? Is right. completely different like problems nowadays. And so yeah, I tell that's you know things change. You just gotta change or die. You know that's what I gotta yep. say. You gotta adapt. I want to talk a little bit about your on screen uh, work. You you host arguably the best race to world first morning show. Um, oh, thank you. Eggs over Azeroth. Um, and I say arguably, but it is the best. There's no argument. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you. Where Where was that born from? And uh, and what drives you to keep doing it? 
Uh, well, I will say it was not my mm-hmm. idea, actually. Yeah. I got approached oh. for it uh, a while back. So during, I actually was approached by the, gen- at the time, general manager of Complexity, where that's where the Limit Guild, which is mm-hmm. now Liquid, uh, they were initially Limit Guild in under the umbrella of Complexity. Uh, they had done, they had started doing their own Race to World First production, and they had approached me during the Castle Nathria tier. Mm-hmm. And uh, the, you know, shout out to Soren out there if you're listening. Uh, so he was uh, him and Azoria at the time was the general manager for Team Liquid and not uh, uh, for you know. Not Team Liquid, uh, Limit. Uh, so Limit, yeah. I got approached by them and like, hey, we want to do kind of like a, a morning show style, you know, thing for our, like, for our pro- for our production, for our Limit, uh, you know, race to world first. We're wondering if you want to take a crack at it. And I was like, <laughs> really? Like, it was, it was a weird thing. It was a weird ask, you know, because it was out of the blue and they just asked me to like, we would like you to write a morning show. Uh, you know, just nice, lighthearted. It's not super serious. This is something that we just wanted you to uh, just kind of give us a, like a good, lighthearted start to the day. Right. And I was like, yeah, I would love to do that. And then um, I had said yes. And then unfortunately, my mom had some health problems. So I wanted to make sure I took care of my mom first. So I didn't get to do Castle Nathria tier. Uh, but then they hit me up again for the next tier afterwards. Um, nice. Which was really cool. <laughs> so uh, they flew me out to... Uh, Texas I got to see uh I got to see the uh what is it the Dallas Cowboys campus uh, I got to spend time and I met for the first time people like Aya people like uh what is it uh oh my gosh so many people so basically all of the OG race to world first uh casting right. groups so there was like Hams Vloris there was like uh Jet there was just uh all these people that I met and um they were looking for a co-host for me because I was sitting there and I was writing all these segments I basically wrote a whole show a whole like the the ske- I wrote the schedule. I wrote uh, what was in the content. They gave me a thank God. They gave me a graphic designer. So they, because I can't graphic design <laughs> to save my life, so I would tell them this is what I need. Is yeah. it sounds weird, but I think you I, you know, <laughs> but I think you can pull it off. And and they did. And wonderful uh, dude. He's still with the uh, organization with Liquid actually. So they uh, Liquid hired him full time. So he gets to do a bunch of. He still gets to do amazing work with them. And. Um, He's just such a, he did such a good job in helping me take all of my assets and, and make uh, the best, you know, first iteration of the morning show. Uh, they were looking for a co-host for me and I couldn't, they couldn't, we, I was looking, they couldn't find one. So I uh, just kind of was like, yeah, I'll totally get on it. Let's go. Nice. So the first time around it was me and I, uh, and it was like the, I think it was the best time around. Uh, the best one <laughs> because I was just sitting there and I was, we were in, uh, in the Shadowlands. So it was the first tier in the Shadowlands and I can't remember what the, what the raid was called um uh sanctum of domination would have been yeah the so it was one. A sanctum of domination and i was just doing everything i could just writing out all these segments and uh it turned out pretty good especially because of uh, with aya there uh she was my reaction andy to all of my just shenanigans <laughs> i was writing um like that reaction and, andy <laughs> yeah she was she like like i just did every like i basically uh she was my soundboard and she was basically chat responding to everything that i was you know like tell me if you think I'm objectively funny, basically on screen or whatever. So she just uh, was the best co-host to have at the beginning because I had never been in front of a camera, never did a broadcast before. And if you have, I don't know (laughs) if there's any fonts out there for it, but like you can absolutely see how nervous I was the very first time, the very first broadcast that we ever did. I was so like tight, uptight and nervous because I had never done camera stuff before. And then, like, as the time, you know, as the broadcast went on, that same one, uh, you know, especially with Aya there, she's just, like, was the best person to help make me feel safe and be able to continue doing what we were doing. So being able to, like, have that the first time, it was really great. Uh, And so then they called me back again. So I got to do, uh, what is it, two tiers with complexity. Nice. And then uh, then I got to do one tier with uh, Team Liquid Mm -hmm. for the morning show. And then uh, after that, they did, you know, they didn't want to call me back again. And that's fine. That's their prerogative. Uh, mm-hmm. When that happened, I just decided I would just keep doing it myself because why not? Yeah. Uh, I did not realize that uh, at the time when I decided I was going to do it myself anyway, I didn't realize that Liquid was going to keep going on, you know, doing what they were doing. And I was like, oh, you know, it doesn't matter. We're not going to be doing the same show anyway. So, uh, right. 
So I still ended up going full speed ahead with me and I hit up Crazy Puck who also didn't get called back for Liquid and I was like, hey, you want to, you want to, do you know, talk about the rest of the world first with me? He's like, yes. <laughs> like we both had this agreement how much we just love to talk about the race to world first to the just the dorkiest like degree that nobody else around us wants to talk about the race to world first as much as we do yeah um so we were just like let's just do it let's just uh so he's been super great about wanting to be my co-host for doing this you know for the for the morning show and that's kind of what i've been doing i want to go back to doing bits again and i want to go back to mm -hmm. And not only just talking about the race, but I want to go back to like, you know, doing lore bits and doing like lighthearted bits again. I just haven't had the time because I ended up picking up all of these other things in my <laughs> career. And like, I decided to just, I don't know, fill my plate up with all these other things that I've been doing in my life. And so right. um, I'm not mad about it. I just realized I need to be more <laughs> organized and really pick on what I want to do. Yeah. Speaking of adding things to your plate, you you just started your own business. You were like... I did. Fuck it. Let's just <laughs> let's go. I did. Pull. I, I um in like in the middle of the first time doing the race to world first morning show. I, I it was originally called Eggs Over Azeroth when it was in complexity, and then they okay. changed it when it was under liquid. So I'm like, eff it. I'm just gonna bring back Eggs Over Azeroth. So um in the middle of me doing Eggs Over Azeroth, I also started a, a business to uh basically help content creators and small businesses succeed. So. I realized over the course of time that I have learned all these skills about inbox management, about mm -hmm. uh, networking. I, I know so many people in the industry that I know I could help people who are having problems that maybe they don't even don't have the spoons. They don't have the, uh, you know, the bandwidth. They don't whatever you want to call it, that they just can't handle really doing the uh, communications uh, for whatever reason for mm -hmm. reaching out to brands on their behalf or doing uh you know they want they've always wanted to set up a podcast or i can do that for them or if they've just wanted to set up like a collaboration with somebody else make an event i've done all of that and i decided to kind of open up a, a business to, to almost like a virtual assistant business is is essentially what it is yeah. so if you just need somebody to help you with all of the day-to-day -day that you either don't have time for or don't have the bandwidth for I, that's kind of what i've been doing for a couple of clients of mine and I recently got hired by a talent agency to just basically doing what I'm doing. Uh, I'm contracted through the talent agency. Right. Okay. And I, I kind of do what I do for like my regular clients, but with them uh, on a different kind of scale, but it works out and it's been doing pretty good. I love it. It's a lot of, a lot of creatives do struggle with that organizational piece and that administrative piece. So having that ability to have somebody who can say, hey, you know what, let me let me take the load for you. Let me, you know, either show you how to do this or let me just do it for you. That's that's uh, that's wild. Where can, uh, just so people know, where can they go to, if they want to hire Lula, where do they go? What's, uh, what's the way? You can actually schedule uh, to uh, have a meeting with me to see if we're a good fit together at lulaboostonline.com. Actually, let me make sure. Uh, I, yeah, we don't because, want to get the wrong uh, one. It's been a minute since I've been peddling myself out since I actually ended up with a couple of clients. Um, I don't mind getting other ones. I just haven't been out there actively like, hey, right. guys, come see my stuff. I would really like you guys to see my stuff right now. <laughs> so uh, I'm just trying to remember... Uh, which <laughs> website it is because I have more than one website I'm running out of because I have a client that I have other websites for lulaboostonline.com if you want to if you want to hire me you can go to lulaboostonline.com <laughs> uh, it says to schedule a consultation that's really just book a meeting with me and right. if we can figure out if uh, I can work for you if, if we are going to be a team together if not it's fine it's free mm -hmm. we get to just chat uh, but if it feels like that I can help you take a load off or help you kind of take your content creation to the next level, I just, that's what I'm there for. I know people, you, you need to build a team. I will build you a team for you. And then I can like, you know, fuck off. So yeah. while well, you have your team busy enough. You. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> I love it. Um, like, if you don't need me anymore. You don't have to have me anymore. It's fine. <laughs> that's right. It's okay to grow. <laughs> yeah, Exactly. I wish a lot of other creators would like understand that it is okay to grow. It's okay to outgrow people. It's okay to yep. outgrow places and, and all that jazz. And um, I feel like a lot of people, too many people can just kind of stick around uh, a little too much, kind of stay stagnant okay. for the sake because they're either too comfortable or they're too uh, 
anxious about what could possibly be next. I think it, it, it's good for people to be uncomfortable and out there. And, you know, that's what yeah. I'm doing. I'm not afraid of failure. I have failed spectacularly many, many times in the flaming ball of fire. Oh, oh, oh. And uh, <laughs> I'm not afraid to keep trying. I'm not afraid to, you know, try other things. So, you know, for the first couple of months of my starting my business, I didn't have any business. So it took a while and mm-hmm. and it takes a lot of trust. And hopefully I can help, you know, other people out there get their stuff together you know i don't judge if your inbox is like crazy crappy that's okay i I don't judge i i'm here to make sure to get you get you feel better feel at ease and that's essentially why i started that business because i had too many friends who were just telling me about how much they were like either disorganized or i had like industry people tell me like i can't get this person to answer back their emails i can't get this person to like do their deliverables that they that we had requested i can't get them to invoice me so they can get paid like i want to pay this man or this person (laughs) I want to pay this person, but they won't invoice me. And then I and then and they look at the other side. And I'm like, I don't know how to invoice. I'm like, okay, well, there's see, I can do that. I can help. I can make the invoice for you. Like I can, right. I can do all those things for you. We can set it up and and make you, you know, better and you know, more attractive to people in the industry who will be like, okay, they they have their stuff together. They do all their deliverables. They invoice me on time, and we get to and it's a nice, good time. I would like to hire them again. Nice. Sort of deal. So that's I'm that's essentially what I'm trying to do. I know to contact when I ever start doing invoices. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to talk about, so your whole household is is content creation based. That is very rewarding, I'm sure. But what are some of the challenges and risks associated with it? It can't all be roses and sunshine. Oh, absolutely <laughs> not. Um, uh, oh, I don't know how personal <laughs> I'm going to get with this. Uh, oh. We don't take a lot of vacation. I'll start with the lighter stuff and maybe I'll go deeper. I'll go d- deeper down that iceberg. Okay. Um, yeah. Essentially, at the very top most, uh, we don't get a lot of time for vacation because um, when I found out and Tally found out that we are both equally ambitious people <laughs> that don't mind hard work and don't mind uh, putting in what needs to be done in order for us to succeed. And and we both, we, it was this weird thing that we both realized we both wanted to not only survive in this world, we want to thrive. We want to be able to uh, uh, have the nice things in life. We want to be able to, and we're not afraid to do the work and work and work and work to make sure that we will always be um, in a place that we want to be. Okay. And so that means we're not always taking vacations. And if we do, it's going to be a nice quickie weekend or we're somewhere we can just drive them back. Um, and so we don't take a lot of time off. And when we do, it's just going to be somewhere local. Lately, it's been Disneyland. So it hasn't been terrible because I freaking love Disneyland. <laughs> and uh, I am, I'm slowly turning Towley into a Disney adult. It's happening because he already yeah. wants to go back. And we had just come we like this past couple of weeks. Like last week, we just came back from Disneyland. He's like, I wouldn't mind going again. I'm like, perfect. This is perfect. Uh, so we're going to go during the new... Yeah, exactly. It was <laughs> excellent. We're going to do this. Uh, so we're going back for the New Year celebration. So we don't get to do it very often. Um, and that's fine. We don't have a, a huge life outside of gaming. Okay. Uh, so we, I try to circumvent... I try to circumvent that because uh, I recognized early on for Tauli and myself that we... if you know, once we you get as a content creator or as just any person in general, once you kind of get past that hump where you're no longer in that immediate Maslow, you know, circle of needs, you know, you're no longer like seriously in dire need of like food, water, or like in this case, money to survive. Um, uh, for me personally, I got a little depressed uh, because oh, really? I was the whole, my whole life has been about chasing money in order to survive so that I can pay the next rent and and so I didn't really have anything afterwards about it like okay now I have now I can think uh, it stop being in survival mode now what and so I did for the longest time I didn't have that and that's when I started like getting more busy where I would like may start a business or I would like mm-hmm. I did yeah. my own cooking streams or I uh, got a hobby and I started gardening and I just started um uh I just I, I got myself busy I, I I ended up getting hobbies I <laughs> I never used to be into makeup and then during the pandemic I got really into makeup like I got one of I uh turned into one of those really I was a late bloomer uh you know makeup person to where I was I have so much eyeshadow right now that I will never I will never have to buy any more eyeshadow in my lifetime 
uh, there is more than I could use in in this life. So I have on I'm on a makeup no buy and uh, but I'm still using it. Like I'm I'm it's there. Yeah, I, the uh, way I look you great. Said, the way you said you get really into makeup, I just have this image of just like shelves and shelves of oh, makeup. Oh yeah, <laughs> I do. I have a vanity area and it is just yeah. absolutely disgusting with just stacks and stacks of like eyeshadow palettes and just all the makeup brushes it's disgusting i was supposed to like flesh it out and you know that's another thing about being a full-time content creator or just getting staying into that business is that none of my house things are like finished right Uh, i was supposed to give myself a really pretty vanity area uh, and i was supposed to like put like nice shelving i was going to decorate it out nope it's not there it's gone uh or it's still there it's just like it's not finished and so um I'm kind of, it's what, it, I'll get there eventually, but you know, what's important is that we have a house mm-hmm. uh, and uh, that's, and you know, the downstairs where people might visit, it's good. Um, and that's another thing. We don't have a lot of too many IRL friends and the ones that we do, we hardly see mm. uh, because we work so much and it, it is hard. Sometimes it's hard when you don't have friends and you're in the content creator business because it's hard to relate to other people. Like how do you relate to norm to right. the the normies, uh, air quotes, uh, when all you know and all you can talk about is like Warcraft meta or like streaming meta or, you know, mm-hmm. you know, that what's going on with Twitch lately? They don't know. They're talking yeah. about sports. They're talking about like uh, the hot goth and real housewives and, you know, and I don't even watch those and I want to, but I can't. <laughs> I don't have the time. So uh, it's hard, you know, to find yourself relatable to people around you. So uh, that's another that's one of those other challenges. This seems long winded, and like, you can just stop me whenever you can. Yeah, no, uh, whenever you want to like switch topics, but uh, it I just it. It gets a little crazy. You mentioned sports. Uh, one of the, I guess, rewards or benefits of of being uh, a Twitch royalty is that okay to say? Um, was uh, getting to go to the Oakland oh, or not Oakland the uh, the Las Vegas Raiders game. <laughs> yes. Uh, very cool thing that we got to do last year. Um, Tally and I got to accept a football on behalf of Twitch uh, because I guess Twitch has a partnership with Allegiant Stadium in Las Vegas. I was very stoked because it was a Chargers Raiders game. Uh, I was nice. very less stoked later on in that game when the Raiders went 61 <laughs> and 21. I was not, I yeah, saw that good. live and I was not okay afterwards. Not a good um, game for the Chargers. It was a. Uh, <laughs> It was with the word. It was a uh, defining oh. moment for the Raiders. It, I do believe that was uh, one of their. It was a record breaking day for for the Raiders. So it was. Yeah. I got to watch history being made. I guess. <laughs> I, I I guess. But uh, we were there with our like Twitch uh, manager dude for Tally, and he was like, "I will I will buy you drinks." I'm like, "Okay, that's fine. I'm cool with that." Uh, so yeah, that was one of the cool things that we got to do. We've always been into football. I, I got into football because Tally was there, and I wanted to I wanted to make sure that I had something in common besides gaming with my man's. Okay. And so I got into football with him, and, and it's the same thing with baseball collecting. He's super into like card collecting right now, and and I I want to be enthusiastic about it with him so that I have more in common with him. And so, uh, I he that is one of the hobbies he picked up so that he can keep himself sane because he used to be very bored. Uh, he used to be. <laughs> You know, he would stop streaming and then he would just eat lunch. And then he's like, I don't know what to do next. I'm bored. Right. I guess I'll nap or I guess I'll stream again. And I'm like, get a hobby, get a hobby. And then he picked card collecting. And now that thing devours his life. Like he is absolutely 100% in it. And uh, I'm happy for him because like I said, I wanted him to have a hobby outside of gaming. And it's it's there successfully. Uh, we did a team because it's it's happening. <laughs> I love it. Uh, you guys. Uh, you guys make a lot of sacrifices too, right? You 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 entirely changed your sleep schedule, didn't you? Because yeah. the majority of his viewers are in EU, and you're yeah, on the so, West Coast. Uh, yeah, every couple of years we do a viewing audit. We figure out where the most of his viewership is, and consistently, it's always been um, it's always been EU friendly. It's always been your Euro- European friendly hours that get us the most viewership, and so we just have continued to just. Uh, he used to be a night man. Now mm-hmm. he gets up at like 3 a.m. And every day, it has been like this for about six, seven years now that he gets up at 3 a.m. And he streams. And um, that is that is how it goes. And unfortunately, I've gotten too used to waking up at 3 a.m. as well. 
Uh -huh. uh, more so during the Race to World First because I was doing like update videos uh, for the Race to World First and I just right. haven't been able to sleep in since. So I, I also get up at 4 a.m. now and it makes me Programmed sad. Programmed yourself. Yeah, I really did. <laughs> That's too bad. <laughs> yeah, I re yeah, it makes me sad uh, because I want to stay up. I want to st I want to stay up. Yeah. Uh, but like, you know, the, the heart is willing, but the body is just sleepy. And, That's right. And I can't, I really want to. Yeah. Uh, one other thing I, I do want to talk about is is Twitch. Uh, right now, there's like a, a there was a very uh, I don't know what the right phrase is. It was uh, an unexpected announcement from the Twitch CEO that Twitch is not profitable, which isn't a surprise. I think we all knew that, but nobody expected the CEO to come out and say it. Uh, and there's been a lot of takes on Twitter around that. Um, as a as a as a person who relies on Twitch, um, how does that feel? Is there, are you uh, that is an absolute no surprise to me uh, at all because well, I don't know. Uh, I don't know how to say this, but I, uh, Tally and I have always been proponents about taking advantage of any uh, opportunities that you get. Mm -hmm. And that includes playing commercials and that includes uh, mm -hmm. using the sub system, the bit system, the cheering system, whatever you want to call it. Since the beginning, um, Tally and myself have always. Uh, worked best, I guess you could say, in a system. Uh, mm -hmm. And so we, whatever system is there, we're going to in-max it and we're going to make sure that we can take care of ourselves. Once again, we have this goal about that we want to not only survive, we want to thrive. So we will work within that system to make sure that we can do that for ourselves. And um, I realized, and I was watching the sentiments when commercials, especially pre-roll commercials, happened at the start of when Twitch started, had started rolling these out. And... Um, I remember a lot of creators got on soapboxes and basically said, this is not what Twitch is about. You guys are just money hungry. Mm -hmm. I refuse to roll commercials. Uh, if you want to support me, so, you know, donate to me directly. Basically, these people were, were are in a fantasy land. They, mm -hmm. they think that um, Twitch it was <laughs> like, what, we're just going to give you 70, 30 with you guys refusing to have subscribers, refusing to have commercials played, like where do you think that money is going to come from to get you guys paid the seventy thirty? Yeah. Uh, so then, no surprise to us whatsoever that the seventy thirty got dropped to fifty fifty, because and then once again, uh, these people on their soapboxes got harder on, their, you know, the sentiment got harder about like don't give these money grubbing, greedy companies your money. Continue to just donate to us directly. Use my Patreon, whatever, instead of Twitch. And I'm like, guys, you're just making it worse. And finally, I kind of around that time that happened, I kind of cracked and I said, do you guys honestly <laughs> think that Twitch will, you know, still be around if you guys refuse to use any of the avenues that they have available for you guys to make money? Like, exactly. You have to keep the lights on. You have to have that business rolling and running. 100% yeah. Tally and I had these conversations where we, were, where we were like, especially with behind the scenes with other, you know, with ex-Twitch employees, with current Twitch employees, back when we were networking really hard, they were always saying that they were not profitable. And I'm like, and, and they were not able to express that because they were told not to. They were, you know, the staff was told mm -hmm. explicitly not to tell anybody that they are not profitable. And this was the going, um, this was the going policy for the last, you know, forever. And so um, people with their, you know, they have ideals and, and they live in this fantasy land that doesn't exist. We live in a capitalistic hellscape and I would <laughs> like to have it less awful for myself and my family and my, yep. and, you know, and people that I want to support. We worked in this system. We're able to take advantage of it. And because of that, I was, you know, me and Tally are able to help uh, friends of ours who are in trouble sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, um, Sometimes those people who have those big ideals or who are just unlucky in general in life will have to have a GoFundMe, a GoFundMe, a Ko-Fi, something that's there. And mm -hmm. because we do what we do, we are able to donate to other people's, uh, you know, when they're in trouble. And and we are grateful that we're able to do that. Yep. And uh, I finally, after Dan Clancy being the most, I mean, approachable CEO I've ever seen. Yeah. You know, I love Evan Sheer. He's a great guy. But have I ever had a one on one with him? Never. Have I ever seen him in real life? Never. Has he ever done any sentiments and talking to people on the Internet uh, to Twitch about Twitch? No, <laughs> never. He started doing all of his communications online after he had left Twitch where he starts, you know, talking like he's a, you know, right. tech guru. 
and that's fine. That's what he wants to do. Um, but you know, when Dan Clancy's here, he has been doing everything possible to connect with streamers. And I, he, I got it to, I have his email. I can talk to him if I wanted to. Yeah. What? He went, uh, I'm a Twitch <laughs> ambassador for the food and drink, uh, community. So I have ambassadorship and, and he, we were having an ambassador meeting and he was in the call and I was like, oh my God, this is the CEO of Twitch. I didn't think this was, this was going to be a thing. And, uh, so he has been super approachable. And then finally everybody else kind of woke up to that sentiment when he was at BlizzCon because that dude was IRL streaming at BlizzCon, walking well, around the floor, just, just being a regular dude, just talking to everybody who wanted to approach him and talk to him. And I think it was great. And so for him to communicate that Twitch isn't profitable, finally, like people mm -hmm. needed to hear that because yep. maybe it'll wake people up <laughs> to the fact that they need to like run commercials. And actually yeah. use the things and the and the products and the services that Twitch has that will, yes, it will make Twitch money too. And yes, you don't have favorable, you know, splits because of, uh, you don't have favorable splits of income from it. But we're, you know, if you, if everyone would have gotten on board, and this is me, personal speculation, if people would have gotten on board and, you know, on commercials, if people would have gotten mm -hmm. on board on the hype trains and all these other things that uh, Twitch was uh, using as a product that would have helped make money for everybody. I don't think they would have taken away the seventy thirty. I don't think they would have uh, nickel and dimed the the streamers like they are now. I think yeah. if we would have just been, if these streamers who were on these soapboxes with these ideals that are unrealistic had realized, um, you know, was were more realistic about what was going on as you know where we're at and stuff like that. I think we would have been able to keep a lot of things, but because you know, margins are just shrinking and, you know, everybody, everything and everyone got the news. Um, it Staff got axed. Their friends, these streamers, his yep. friends, their networking partners in the industry absolutely axed because of it uh, on Twitch. Like, how many employees did they say, like, in the last year and a half, 900 employees got let go of Twitch? Yeah. I truly believe that um, while some of it still might not have been preventable, we could have at least, uh, it wouldn't have been as severe. Yep, a lot of uh, a lot of content creators were quick to cut off their nose to spite their face. It seemed like, yeah. Um, and yeah. Uh, I realize, and I know where they're coming from. I know I, the world that they want to live in. I, I want to live in that world too, but we don't. Yeah, it doesn't exist. And um, yep. maybe one of these days we'll get there. But at the moment, you just have to kind of work <laughs> with what you've got. And once you have enough for yourself and you're comfortable, and maybe you can start helping other people. Maybe you can actually help bring about change. But I see way too many creators who have been super resistant to these programs and then later on get um get call outs that they because they need a you know, hey, this happened, I need a GoFundMe, I need a Ko fi, I need right. you know, when they could have helped themselves a little bit more by just kind of taking them taking what was there. Yep. I guess Take advantage say. of it. Yeah. Um content creation, tanking. Building an empire of business management. What does the future hold for you, Lula? <laughs> uh, that's a good question. I'm I'm learning. I'm still learning. I have started learning a lot from being contracted in a uh, in a uh, talent agency. So mm -hmm. I'm getting to learn more on the talent ag agency side of things, which is kind of neat. Uh, I want to learn more. I've always wanted to learn more about the industry. Uh, I'm on a financial. Uh, I'm a uh, or is it personal finance journey? So I'm, I'm learning more about personal finance. Uh, I'm learning uh, the things that I should have learned, you know, back when I had just started turning into an adult, uh, you know, stuff about just retirements or, you know, right. how to effectively just not, or not work till you die. Yeah. Stuff like that. You're ever going to retire. You don't strike me as the kind of person who could just put it all down. <laughs> I, I've been hearing that. I, I hear that a lot. And I think they're right because I, I can't be not doing anything because I've had Towley tell me more than once, like, you don't actually have to work. You know that? I was like, yeah, I know. Uh, I know, but I have to. Like, I got to do something. I can't sit right. here all day and do nothing. I'm, I, I need to do something. So uh, yeah. I'm always going to be I'm always going to be out there trying to learn new things, um, trying to learn new uh, industries, I guess you could say, or, or programs because I need to or I want to. So. Hey, sorry to interrupt, but I have to tell you about this season's sponsor. Ever Ember Creative is a studio dedicated to making life easier for content creators. They've helped me shape Recruit a Friend through brand design, video editing, and social media management. But they do so much more than that. 
anything you need, they can do it. If you're looking for a team to help you achieve your goals, however big or small, call them. In the six months that I've been working with them, I couldn't have asked for better people to share this journey with. Cool. I love it. Uh, Lula, we end every episode with a questionnaire. It is 10 questions. And if you are ready, I would like to ask you those now. Okay. Okay. Question okay, number I'm ready. one. What is your favorite word? My favorite word is, um, ooh, God. I was trying to, uh, let me see here. Uh, moist. Moist. Oh, I love it. That was my yeah. favorite word. <laughs> Great answer. I used to say moist all the time when I was in the cooking stream. So it was just, it was, oh, it was yeah. just one of those things to where it, you either, someone gets either skeeved out or somebody, you know, giggles about it. And yeah. uh, there was no in between. So I would always just use that word as much as possible. It used to be my, it used to be my sub alert. It was very funny. That's great. That's great. There is a lot of people who don't like that word. It's it's shocking to me. Yeah, I love it. I love that they don't like it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, question number two: What is your least favorite word? Um, can't. Okay. Yeah. That's that's fitting. <laughs> question number three: What sound or noise do you love? Uh, I love hearing rain falling. I know this is a weird one, but like I, I'm super, I love auditory and I love hearing rain falling. I love hearing okay. my dog snoring while it's rain falling because it's nice. just kind of like that lazy day. Okay. And so it's, I, I guess I would say it's like a, 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 a summation of comfort for me is a, my favorite sound. And that's just like, yeah, my dog snoring, the rain falling, you know, In just, happy uh, place. yeah, it's just a happy place for me like that. Cool. Uh, question number four: What sound or noise do you hate? Ooh, uh, my Twitch wife does this slurping sound. Oh no, that I really hate. Oh no, and it gives me like it, I I visibly cringe every time I hear it, and she knows it, so she does it all the time, and I hate it so much. <laughs> I'm just like just, seems... just this thing, just very like very visceral, just like a slurping sound that I just absolutely hate. Right. Shout out to Chick Drummer. You bitch need to go to hell because that's I hate that sound so much. <laughs> that's great. I wish I, I'm gonna see if I can find it and see if I can cut it in here. Oh my god. <laughs> Question number five. What is your favorite dungeon? <laughs> Ooh. Um I think my favorite dungeon <laughs> is Skolomans. Mm, good. I used dungeon. to uh, I used to help my friends farm Skolomance and OG WoW and like Vanilla WoW for Alana's Embrace or Headmaster's Charger or something like that. Okay. Never dropped, um, but we would always just have a good old time, just like running through Skolomance and Vanilla WoW, and uh, still one of my favorite places to like go in and, and do dungeons in. Yeah, that's a good spot. Uh, question number six: What is your okay. least favorite dungeon? Oh, there's a lot. Hang <laughs> on. Uh, any of the SOD dungeons, honestly. <laughs> uh, the, probably the train one I'm not a fan of. Oh, yeah, Grim Rail Depot. Yes, Grim, Grim Rail Depot is not my favorite at Yikes. all. Yikes, yeah, it's, I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Yep. Question number seven, what is your favorite curse word? Um. Ooh. Cunt. Yeah, <laughs> nice. <laughs> Yeah, that I know it's a weird out of left field, yeah. but uh, you know it's turning around as being a good cuss word nowadays. So like, yeah. uh, I'm all about it. I'm ready. Yeah. The more time I spend with Australians and people in the UK, the more I hear it. So it's <laughs> yeah, it's like it's decidedly same for me that it's just coming des desensitized as a cuss word to more of like serve. It's more of a serve now. Yeah. Uh, for a lot of people, <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I'm I'm about that. Hell yeah, let's go. <laughs> Question number eight: What is your favorite raid? Ooh, um, I think my favorite raid is Old War. I think a lot of people's favorite is Old War, actually. That's a good, but like that's classic, a good old, like very, old, you know, the very first time OG Old War when you were like required to go do the first, you know, Rock'em Sock'em, you know, mm -hmm. robots, or I should say race cars and stuff like that. Uh, that was probably my favorite. It's just nice. it, too, way too many chances, though, of people messing up, but man, it was fun for me. I enjoyed yeah. it. Old War was fun. Yeah, it's a great one. It's uh, definitely up there for me as well. Question number nine: What is your least favorite raid? Um, anything in the Shadowlands. Mm. Yeah, okay. Story checks out. Yeah, <laughs> I just I do I don't know. It was just not enjoyable. Uh, yep. Nope. Yep, I'm with you. Question number ten: Azeroth was real. Where would you call home? 
Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. Um, I think if I had to pick a location, I would think it would it would be Darnassus. <laughs> I really like that place. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I know people are just going to be like Darnassus don't exist on War. Hey, okay, whatever, buddy. Um, yeah, this is a hypothetical. Calm down. Yeah, so, those people don't listen to the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, it's definitely like Darnassus. That place is pretty. It's perpetual nighttime, which is what I'm all about. Like, as much as I love the sunshine, it's fine, I guess. But like, give me yeah. somewhere where it's like, I don't have to see the sun as often. Okay, great. You know, I'm down. Nice. <laughs> uh, that's it. That's the show. Lula, thank you so, so much for being here. You're welcome. This was actually a really fun time. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, good. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I do have one more question. Why does yeah. your sign say eat ass snort ambient? <laughs> oh, you saw that? You caught that. Uh, that's my community guild's motto. Okay. Um, that's our guild motto. Uh, shout out to the struggle bus on Illidan. Okay. Uh, we we had this conversation where we were talking about, um, we do the weird... We, all of us are like 30 and 35 and older and uh, we were having this conversation about uh why we do the darndest things on ambien right like i just I, you right. don't know you ordered something weird off amazon until it comes in the mail and then you realize that was the night you took ambien i was like oh yeah that's <laughs> okay. weird, right you okay. do the sh- craziest stuff like eat ass and stuff okay so and he just kind of he just kind of got the eventually we got there to where like okay that's the unofficial guild motto now so you know congrats it. everyone I love it. Thanks for answering that. I was I was curious, but bugging me up and like, why does it say? <laughs> That's okay. I absolutely understand. Um, and I, I forget sometimes it's there, so I I forget, and then somebody brings it up. Like, okay, yes, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. I love it. Uh, why don't you tell our friends where they can find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at <laughs> Lulaboo Jenkins. You can find me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Lulaboo. You can find me on Instagram, Lulaboo Jenkins on Instagram as well. Once again, if you want to see if we're a good fit to come together to unfuck your life on content creation, you can find me at lulaboostonline.com to like schedule a meeting with me. See if uh, see if I can help you out. I love it. Are you guys gonna be at any uh, gonna be at any football games uh, next year? We uh, well, the season's toss? coming down to a close. Uh, we're probably gonna have a Super Bowl party, but we're not gonna have uh, nice. We're not going to the Super Bowl. That thing is like tens of thousands of dollars yeah. for a ticket. It's in Las Vegas this year. It's not cheap. No, that is uh, that's not going to be cheap at all. So we're just going to like have a Super Bowl party at home. And uh, my next my next football, hopefully cross my fingers that the Chargers get Jim Harbaugh as the head coach. Dang, and uh, we get to watch football back in like uh, during the season again in August. Nice. Yeah. Jim Harbaugh will be a huge game. Uh, and oh, yeah, friends, absolutely. you can follow us on Twitter at RAF underscore podcast. You can subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you're inclined, you can drop us a review. They do help the show get discovered. Remember, in a world where you can be anything, be kind. We'll see you next week. Bye.